What is up ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for tuning in for another quick little channel CGE video. For this one, finally going to be getting the front wheel bearings here on the PTGT replaced. Everything went pretty smoothly overall with a few complications, but by the very end something else goes wrong. So be sure and stick with this one. Alright, so first of all, let me take you guys out here for a spin and show you exactly what the noise is that the car is making. Alright, so first let me turn on to my uh, closed course in uh, Mexico, right near the uh, Mexican uh, border here, of course. Alright, right around, well, you can see how fast I'm going. Um, when I turn to the left, you can hear it. you could hear the noise when I did that but every time I turn to the left there's sort of this sort of a humming drone sort of a sound and it's it's annoying to me but that's obviously wheel bearing and it was uh, yet another common issue on the PT Cruiser so so I'm just gonna go ahead and get both mine replaced all right so let me show you guys the new bearings that I bought got these off rock auto these are centric bearings Here's the bearing. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be replacing. Anyways, I'm gonna try to get a start on this today. I gotta, of course, jack the car up and everything first and then pull the wheels, pull all the brakes, and then I gotta figure out how to get the actual hub off. I might have to get a different, um, like a big socket for the axle nut. I know I had to do that on the DTS, which I just did this last week. But other than that, should be fairly straightforward. Knock on, knock on camera. By the way, I forgot to mention before, I tried to find like a hub assembly with the bearings all pressed in and everything. I looked everywhere online. Nobody sells like a complete assembly anymore. I mean, I was willing to pay the extra money just to be able to unbolt the old one, get the old one out and put a new one in and have no bother. But you have no choice really anymore but to just buy the bearings themselves. And then either if you have a hydraulic press and you know what the heck you're doing or you have to take it off yourself take it to somebody and have the bearings pressed out and pressed in, which is what I'm gonna be doing. All right, well, I got the car already jacked up. I just, I like to jack up all four corners because why not? Then the car's secure and I don't really have to worry about, you know, blocking the wheels or anything like that. So I did that and I also pulled the wheel off. I feel like the jacking up the car and pulling the wheel off montages are kind of uh, highly overrated. It's kind of boring. And I mean, if you're trying to learn something from this, and you don't know how to like jack your car up and pull the wheel off, just just don't don't do it. But anyways, to pull the hub assembly, uh, obviously I'm gonna have to pull the brakes first, which is what I'm gonna do now. The tie rod end is going to have to come off, which is gonna sketch me out because I don't wanna have the alignment go out of whack or anything again. So I'm probably gonna be really careful and like mark just in case. I don't wanna have to take this thing to get aligned again. I've already had that done twice. Back in here, there's a bunch of stuff that's gonna to have to get disconnected at this wire, I'm assuming. And then it's gonna unbolt from here. I'm pretty sure these bolts are gonna come out and this whole thing is gonna come out. Oh yeah, and also the, uh, the ball joint's probably gonna to have to come out as well. But first things first, let's get all the brakes off and then we'll take a closer look at what needs to happen. So I got the, the caliper and the mounting bracket off. So now the brake rotor should come off. Maybe not. There she goes. Actually, I'm honestly surprised. I bought these brakes like about a year ago now and they were only like 23 bucks. And they're actually, they're holding up really good. And I noticed like minimal warping at this point. And I mean, I've done a lot of hard braking, so. Looks like there's a, this little cap here, or a lock or something. This pin is already like disintegrating because of the rust, so. There you go. 
All right, so here's what that was. It was just like a cap that goes over the axle nut, probably just to protect it. And there was also this little washer sort of a thing behind it. If I was smart, I'd just get a new one of these, but I'm probably just gonna clean this one up and reuse it. All right, well, it looks like I'm definitely going to have to get a bigger socket for the axle nut. Obviously, the one I got for the Cadillac, 34 millimeter. Well, actually, this is one in three eighths, but it worked on the on the 34 millimeter nut to get it loose. It's way too big, as you can see. So I'm gonna look that up, and I'm gonna have to go get one before I go any further. Today's Sunday, so I don't know if any like auto parts places nearby are open, so I'm gonna have to check on that as well. I don't wanna have to drive too far if I can help it. Worst scenario, you'll see me again tomorrow. But I'll check back in with you guys when get things figured out. All right, guys, well, I'm back the next morning. I just ran downtown and stopped at Napa, and I ended up getting a 32 millimeter impact socket. The moment of truth, does it fit? Did the forum lie to me? It fits. Thank you, PT Cruiser Links. <laughs> well, it definitely came in handy to have the impact wrench that could have sucked otherwise, but needless to say, we got it off. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the tie rod end. First, I'm just gonna put like a little, like a marker mark here something just in case anything happens but I, I doubt anything will happen there's a pin down here in this nut all right and there's the pin now the nut if i remember correctly is 18 millimeters ah it is an 18 mil that crack loose pretty easy it's not long ago that i replaced all these so it is Well, that thing does not want to come off, so we're gonna wait on that. I'm gonna try to remove the lower ball joint here. I think that's a 18 as well. This might be a little tight. All right, got the nut off of that bolt. Tap. And there's the bolt. What they recommend using for the tie rod ends is a pickle fork, I think they call it. Of course, I don't have anything like that, so this could be a problem. All right, finally got the tie rod end up. I'm um, just gonna push that out of the way for now and not mess with it. How I ended up getting it out was I put the nut back on the bottom, I gave it a few whacks with this, and it came out. This is not like the way, the right way to do that, but you know, it worked. I think I, I think I messed up a little bit, but. It still threads on, so we're, <laughs> we're okay, but just be careful. So I think um, just these big ones, I don't know what size these are, so I have to figure that out. And also the, this sensor, I think it's 10 millimeters or something like that. Once that's done, we should be able to slide this whole, I guess it's the steering knuckle and the bearing and everything out. Oh, well, that's gonna do it, I think. All right, well, I think before I risk um, rounding any of these off, I'm going to stop, I'm going to soak them down with some PB blaster. And if that fails, then I'm probably gonna have to go and get yet another socket, probably like a 20 something millimeter for these. All right guys, well I made a run and I got a 21 and a 22 millimeter too. And it turns out that it is a 21 millimeter um, that you will need. I think this is the 22. It's a little loose, but it works. 21 fits like a glove. So I got a deep dish and a regular so I can put one on the other end if I need to, but Hopefully we get those nuts loose now, and then we're good to go. Gotta make sure I'm careful around my brake caliper. Don't wanna have to replace another one of those. This one's already pretty loose. I must've got that loose yesterday. This one is the one I'm concerned about. This nut does not want to break loose. Holy crap. Time to get out the big guns. Let me hope I don't break it. Well, something happened. The bolt broke. Look at that. <laughs> that was tight. That was way over torqued. All right, should be able to pull this back now. The actual slide back out of here. And then just gotta pop it off the ball joint. Oh, I forgot, I almost forgot. Whoo, almost forgot to pull the sensor here. Looks like it's just one bolt in it. There we go. Get the axle out of the way. Hopefully this doesn't give us too much trouble. There we go. All right, so it finally popped off the ball joint. How I actually ended up doing that was I got a screwdriver in here 
and I, I'm sure you're not supposed to do it this way, but got a screwdriver in there and just kind of tapped it a few times with the mallet, and then I was able to finally slide it out. Of course, I had it all coated with PB Blaster anyways, but there we go. There's the um, steering knuckle and the hub assembly all together. I'm pretty sure this is the side with the bad bearing. We'll take a look at the other side once we get it off. Something I want to note though about the tie rod end is the way I pulled it off, I put the nut on the end and I hit it. Very, very bad idea. <laughs> and in my research I did, you know, they said that is a very bad idea. But I'm also an impatient dude, so I did it anyways. But you can see um, I accidentally, I, well, the threads are okay. I mean, the bolts will thread, but I messed them up a little bit. And it also, it's not good for the uh, knuckle inside here to be banging on the bolt here. So best way is if you can get a pickle fork, they call it. It's just a thing that'll go around here and you can pry up on it. Because that would suck if I had to replace my tie rod ends again. It would be the third time I replaced tie rod end on this car. But anyways, now that that side is finished and it's off, I'm going to do the side off camera really quick. And I'll check back into you guys and talk to you guys, show you guys the bearings and everything when I'm all finished. There we go. This side took me about 45 minutes with minimal complications. But either way, I was able to get the tie rod end off pretty easily. I was really careful with it this time. I got everything off, like the ball joint. I got the ball joint off the same way I got the other side off with the screwdriver. What I found works best is to loosen, or at least at least get this the ball joint cracked loose and get the nut off before pulling these bolts. I don't remember if I did that on the other side, but this side I pulled the bolts out and then I went to go crack this loose and it was all trying to like come down on me. Put it back up and just kind of slid the bolts in a little so I could get this cracked loose. Basically, get this loose before you take these out. Anyway, just a quick comparison of the two sides. Here's passenger side, here's driver side. I do hear this one making a little bit of a rubbing noise, so I'm betting this was the side that was bad. But as far as actual visually, I don't know the difference, so there's, for the guys that know what they're doing, there's, <laughs> there's what they look like. So anyways, now my camera's about to die. I need to call my mechanic and see but I can bring these down to have the bearings pressed in and out and see what's up with that. So I'm going to check back in with you guys after I make the phone call and we get these bearings done. All right, guys. We're well, back yet again the next morning. I called my mechanic last night and arranged to bring the my assemblies and everything down this morning. So I just dropped them off just now. So now we wait, I guess. Right, I just got back. My mechanic got the new bearings all pressed in. So we're good to go. They charged me for, I think, a half an hour labor, so like 40 bucks. So, I mean, that wasn't bad. But anyways, before we start installing them back into the car, I'm going to hit them with a little bit of this good stuff. Oh, well, that looks a little better. All right, let's see how much of this I can get done tonight. Okay, I'm going to slide it on the ball joint first. I'm going to use my little screwdriver trick again, I think. Alright, slid on like butter. The bolt slid in here. Get it into here. And I think we can slide it out about like that. Oh shoot. I forgot to put the axle in. Okay, so don't do it like I did. <laughs> in, just pop the sensor in here in this 10 mil, and then the axle nut. That's pretty much everything, but I'm not going to get everything tightened down yet because I do want to get new bolts, this, that go through into the shock tower, so, I mean, I'm going to at least have to get one for the other side because the one broke off. i got to look into that now. If I can make a run someplace and get them tonight, then the car will be done. Alright guys, back yet again the next day, of course. I swear, I'm going to get this car finished today if it kills me. But anyways, I just went and got the bolts so I can get the uh, the strut where the strut ties into everything or whatever. The, the new bolts, the new bolts for here. But yeah, now we should be able to get this finished up. I have a torque wrench that goes from I think 50 to 150. The axle nut goes to 180 foot pounds, but I just hit that with the impact wrench and call it good. All right, so the ball joint bolt down below here torques to. I think 70 foot pounds. And don't quote me on any of these torque specs. I've just kind of gone around the internet, random random places. I probably shouldn't have gone <laughs> and found uh, some torque specs. And that's just what I'm going by. All 
All right. All right, now these bolts up here on the strut, they say to torque to 40 foot-pounds, and then go an extra quarter turn, a lot of people said to do, so. Right, there's 40. Probably not even a quarter turn. Then, of course, the tie rod end, torque to, I believe that's 40 foot-pounds as well. Now, in some cases, I think the tie rod end, the bolt will spin. The ball is gonna spin, actually, in the joint, so you might have to figure out a way to hold it down sometimes, but. I didn't have to do that with mine. Also, depending on the tie rod end that you have on the car, there might be one of these, I think they call them like a crown nut or a castle nut or something so that you can slide a uh, pin through just kind of as added protection on that nut. I'm gonna have to slide a new pin through there because I'm pretty sure I had to break the pin to get it off. But anyways, now that that's all done, we can start putting the brakes on. All right, and then brake rotor, of course. This is the easy part. Right, the caliper mounting bolts, I'm quoting this from memory, so um, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but I'm pretty sure they are 50 foot-pounds. All right, and then the brake pads can go into the mounting bracket. I'm going to cut the zip tie I used to hang up my caliper. Pretty sure these only torque down normally to 20 foot-pounds. I'm going to torque them down a little more because past experiences it made me a little bit paranoid about that. I look and my rear brake caliper was dragging by the brake hose. That's, yeah, I don't know why it did that. So I actually set the torque wrench for like 25 foot-pounds for those and then I just went a little extra so now I know they're nice and tight. Anyways, the battery is about to die on the camera and everything's pretty much all set so I'm just going to get the wheel on and get the other side finished up. Then I'll check back in with you guys. Sorry about the lighting, it's kind of windy so I have to put you here if you want to hear me. <laughs> so as you know, I hate coming out with long videos and that's exactly what this is going to be but oh well I guess. I got everything put back together. I got that little cap that goes on the axle and on and the pin in there. All that little stuff like that that I talked about when I took them off in the beginning. Put the wheels on, took the car for a quick little spin, and obviously the wheel bearing noise is gone. So that was a plus, but now my brake pedal is going all the way to the floor and the steering just doesn't feel right. So something happened with the brakes anyways. I quickly inspected everything and looked at the brakes and everything and I don't see anything in particularly wrong. At least the wheel bearings fixed. <laughs> but for the sake of time and also I ran out of time this week, I was a sick dude for a little while there. Just a lot of stuff has come up and it's been kind of frustrating for me and not being able to get this thing finished and on the road again and being able to drive it. So over the next few days I'm going to be working my tail off to get this stupid thing working again and figure out what's wrong with the brakes now and just get things tied together so watch for that video coming very soon as I finally get this fixed and back on the road. I swear I drive this thing for like a month and then I can't drive it for like a week because I have to fix it. Four weeks on, one week off. <laughs> Anyways guys, I'm sorry again about that, about the schedule with the videos and for this, but be sure and give it a thumbs up if you somehow enjoyed. Comment down below with any questions about the wheel bearing replacement or just Anything you would like to say. And as always, be sure to go subscribe to see stuff whenever it comes out. Lots more videos this week. Got a couple different things I've, I've been filming and I want to come out with. So, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. You rock. God bless, and I will see you in the next one.